Awesome. Well, thank you everybody. Thank you for joining us here for our TechSoup webinar, Collaborative Training for Nonprofits on TechSoup Courses. We have a whole team here to answer your questions, the whole TechSoup team in courses, and they do a fantastic job. So any questions that you have, feel free to ask them today. We're gonna to move on to the next slide to show you how you can engage with us today. Um, if you have a question, please put it in the Q&A section, or you can type it in chat. We have um, plenty of members that can answer your questions, but we prefer them in the Q&A, and at the E section, we will answer them. If you need the closed caption um, to follow along, just tap on that CC button, and you can actually choose your language now. I love how Zoom is changing things up. We will email you the video replay and the slides within 48 hours. And I'm looking forward to handing this over to Saba and the whole Courses Tech team to hear more about this. I always learn from you guys. So welcome, everybody. Thanks, Saba. Thank you, Arita. Hello, everyone. Thank you for taking the time to join us today. Uh, allow me to quickly introduce our team. We have Gray Harriman here, who is uh, our director and leading our global uh, learning program at TechSoup. My colleague here, Shuya, who handles all uh, production and instructional design for all of our wonderful TechSoup courses that we have. And uh, yours truly, I handle uh, operations for our learning programs. Let's talk a little about our agenda today. Our agenda is uh, going to be covering, of course, uh, information about our topic. We will take some time to go over what the TechSoup program offers, our offerings through all our courses, and mainly talk about our collaborative trainings for nonprofit staff and volunteers. Uh, let's uh, start by sharing the aim of our TechSoup courses program. Um, our aim, the TechSoup Courses program, aims to train nonprofit staff and volunteers to help organizations become digitally transformed and resilient. And uh, we support uh, all of these organizations globally through our training courses. So since we're on the topic of courses, let's start off with our first poll question. Uh, we, you can use, uh, scan this QR code from your phones or simply log on to menti.com and use the code that we've shared. Uh, so we'll give, give you a couple of seconds to do that. Uh, and we'd like you to answer our first poll question. Have you taken a TechSoup course? Shriyak, do you want to pull up our uh, results? Wow. Um, I see that many of you have taken three or more courses, which is great. And uh, glad to see that many of you haven't. And this is a great opportunity for us to introduce you to what we have. So uh, uh, let's move on uh, to our next slide, please. Uh, here's a little more information about our TechSoup uh, courses program. We, uh, this program was started in 2017, and we currently have over 200 courses with 80,000 learners globally. In chat, uh, we will put in our link to our catalog for courses. Um, and through our learning platform, we offer different types of courses. Um, let us uh, go ahead and introduce to you what are the delivery methods that we use for our courses. So as you can see here, we uh, do have live events which are led by experts, subject matter experts. Um, and these are either webinars or seminars or uh, one hour Ask the Expert sessions. Uh, so you come in, send in your questions, and we have the expert answer them live as you are interacting with them. Then we have our on-demand courses. So these are great because these can be taken at your time, at your convenience. And on our catalog, when you browse through them, you'll uh, sim you'll see these on-demand courses. They're usually 101 or 201 level courses that we have on our catalog. We also used to have workshops in, uh, in person, and uh, now mostly we do many of them online and, uh, of course, remotely. We also offer different kinds of learning, like the micro learning, which are shorter videos. They are guides uh, or resources that are helpful to nonprofit staff and volunteers. And you simply can pull that up to use that as a resource guide or watch a short video to uh, you know, engage in learning uh, with us. 
Uh, we're mostly going to be talking today about our blended uh, learning programs. And um, we will, uh, to give you an introduction of what these blended learning programs are, these are instructor-led life trainings that happen over a pre period of six to eight weeks. Uh, and they have a live session every week with self-paced content as well. So they usually usually run from six to eight weeks, but each session is recorded. So not only do you have the opportunity to interact live, but if you want to go back and look at material, you can do that. Or if uh, you missed a session, you can still go back and look at the recording. Uh, and then we have assignments, uh, et cetera, that we do during the six to eight uh, period to sort of uh, build on the learning that was shared. And um, a very interesting component that we have that we've received great feedback on is our discussion forum. It allows you to interact with the subject matter expert and also with like-minded peers like yourself that are going through this uh, course and may have you know, great nuggets of information to share or you might come together with you to prob problem solve on a common issue. In terms of variety of topics, we, uh, we do have a variety of topics that we have courses on, mainly uh, the pillars that we have are strategy, technology, operations, marketing, and data management. But of course, as you can imagine, since we have over 200 courses, the, uh, they cover various uh, topics. And we do have some very interesting uh, blended learning courses uh, coming up uh, in the near future, which we will share about um, very soon uh, with you. I will now hand it over to Gray Harriman to continue. So over to you, Gray. Okay. Well. Good to be with you here. Uh, so we have, you know, we're going to concentrate on our uh, 300 level courses, which are the hybrid, as we said today. Um, so we'll say a little bit about you know, them and how they fit. You know, we have a, um, you know, number of offerings. And as, uh, you know, we, um, as Saba said, six to eight weeks is what we use for hybrid courses. Um, there's no magic in, in the sense that uh, we are not uh, uh, arbitrary saying this, but you know we are going to go through the instructional design process that uh, Shuya is going to uh, show, and we'll uh, let you see how um, how we determine you know the you know the uh, the structure of the courses, and that determines the length. Usually, it, it's it's a, a six week. Uh, we um, you know try to have these courses be project based so that when uh, you leave the course you have uh, some experience uh, that's um, relevant to your nonprofit uh, you've worked with the instructor so you have you know questions you know answered um, it's not a consultative situation in the sense that you know we're not, we're not consulting to tailor everything to your nonprofit but rather we're trying to give you the background and get you or the, the questions that um, that are relevant to you, uh, so that then you can tailor things to your nonprofit. And um, we'll uh, go to the next slide. Okay. So we use an instructional design approach, which uh, we will be showing, is a well-known instructional design approach called the ADI uh, model, and um, that's what it stands for, the Analysis, Design, Development, Implementation, and Evaluation, in which you know it, the analysis part is really important. Uh, we uh, try to see who is going to be taking the course. You know, it could be executive directors, it could be staff, it could be volunteers. Um, so we try to determine you know who's going to be uh, the, you know, the the population interested in this course, so that we can tailor it to those specific needs. You know, then we go into the design uh, section, and uh, as we design it, you need to to know that we are focusing on nonprofits. So uh, while you know sometimes the topical area, for example, we could deal with something related to marketing, uh, but it's very different to market in a nonprofit than it is in in, in a business. So we're going to be looking, you know, throughout the design as to how uh, that uh, fits the, the nonprofit. 
And so th those are key components, the analysis and the design. The development is, is more mechanical. We've already you know, gone through the design. So we, we are, um, now are looking at you know, how do we deliver and uh, we'll see more when, when Shuya you know, presents. But it's it's um, you know it's all that's all guided and instructed by the analysis and, and the design. The implementation is where we put it into the learning management system that you will actually you know engage with. You will enroll. You will uh, you know do all your activities. And then something really important that differentiates you know much of what we do at TechSoup, which is the evaluation. So there's several areas here that are real key that are different from what you would see, you know, in other places when, when you go to take courses, the analysis and the design, as well as the evaluation, those, those are key and key differentiators for the courses that we provide. Let's move to the next slide. And Shuya, you're gonna... Yeah, thank you, Sabah and Gray. So I'm very uh, excited here to show you two of the courses that we had in the past as examples. So you can uh, have a closer look at what the learner experience is like. Um, so the first example is a course named of uh, named as Become a Tech Forward Fundraiser um, that happened in last May. I'm going to open the course session. And so this is the uh, course front page and you can go to course from here or um, you uh, learners usually get an email announcement from our team letting them know that the course has been opened. The course session has been opened on the learning management system before the first lab session. So you can also use the link in the email to come in the, to the same place here. Um, this is the home for every uh, thing that people will need to access the course materials and the lab sessions. So as you can see from my, um, browser window here, um, you will see a welcome module uh, at the first site introducing you the basics uh, and what will be covered in this course and what you are going to learn. And uh, we also have a pre-assessment form for you to assess how much knowledge you already know before taking the course. So then you can make a comparison after taking the course to see how much you have improved. And we also, um, as uh, Saba and Gray mentioned, we have a discussion forum dedicated to um, each course, each 300 level course. So we are inviting people to uh, introduce yourself and get to know the fellow learners before the first live session. So, um, so we are more familiar with each other. Um, you can see um, this is um, the participant from last time. And we also have instructions of how you can complete this course. Um, you, typically we require 80 tech points and the submission of the course and uh, evaluation form in order to get the completion certificate. And there's also some instructions of what activities in the course will award you tech points and those uh, mechanics. And uh, you can get to know the instructor of this course, the experts. Um, before the session by reading the bio. Um, and so then we have all these um, modules for each week that we release on a weekly basis. Also, we will send out a reminder email uh, one or two days before each live session, letting you know that um, uh, the live session is going to happen on a certain date at certain time. So you remember to uh, come to the session. And also, if there is any uh, pre-session learning materials for learners to go through, it will be also included in the email. So people can uh, click on the link and come here and go through any materials um, that may be embedded here. And for this one, uh, because it's a past course, so you don't see, uh, you see the recordings here, but if it's a new course that you are coming to attend the live session, you will see an orange button here. Um, so um, this is how people access um, the live session to interact with the instructor and peers. And after the live session, uh, a few days, usually uh, two days or so, um, 
the recordings will be processed at, at, along with the transcripts and uh, Zoom chat and any other resources mentioned. So we will send another email to uh, learners as a recap for this week, uh, remind you to come here to visit the recordings and uh, other um, activities, practice activities uh, you are supposed to do um, for this week. So um, you will see uh, the recordings, transcripts, download link, and um, um, we have a, a separate page for all the resources and the activities for this week. For example, um, for this week one, um, we invite learners to complete a tech stack inventory worksheet to get to understand your uh, technology um, landscape before starting the whole project for the course. And um, for the for uh, after you have completed the work, we're inviting you to um, share your work in the discussion forum. So the instructor can provide feedback. You can see um, there are some back and forth here and uh, uh, feedback is provided by the instructor. And sometimes uh, learners also um, uh, enjoy looking at each other's work and share their feedback to their peers. Um, and we also have additional discussion threads to, for people to share their idea on the topic of the first week, like this one. Who helps you when your technology glitches? So um, people come here to share their experiences or ideas or thoughts. Um, so to have some in-depth uh, discussion there. And um, there's also a place to answer, uh, ask questions to get answers from the expert in the discussion forum. Um, and uh, there are more additional resources for people to check out if you want to um, take learning to a, a more advanced level. Um, there are some additional resources. So uh, the format is similar for each week. Um, people will go to the next week when the time approaches and uh, go through the uh, materials and the activities. So for this course, uh, the topic is fundraising technology. The overall project uh, or end outcome uh, and result for this course is a six month action plan to put together your technology plan for your fundraising. So um, it's breaking down into pieces for each week. The first week is to um, help you um, get an, a, a basic understanding of your current technology. And then the second week and uh, the following weeks help you understand um, the different types of technology that you can take into consideration and the other um, related um, details or preparations you will need to do um, for this type of technology. For example, the second week is uh, for databases. So you will need to um, reflect on your data collection and storage uh, plan. And so after all these weeks, um, um, near the end of the course, you will be putting together the whole action plan. After the course finishes, um, we invite people to fill out the assessment form, which I mentioned that there is a comparison of um, the same learning objectives after the course, so you know how much you have improved. And we also collect feedback on your experience in this course so we can um, improve our future offerings, which uh, we are really, we are uh, very appreciative of. Um, and um, if people want to download a certificate of completion, you can come to um, either this module to get more information or um, there's um, links uh, on the top menu for people to uh, access the certificate. So this is our first example. And uh, I want to show you another example 
on a different topic that also happened last year, that is on uh, data analytics for nonprofits, uh, leveraging your data for action. Um, The format and the process um, is very similar as uh, the first example that I just described. So for the second example, I want to quickly show you um, the content side a little bit. So um, this course is aiming at helping nonprofits to come up with uh, your data plan. And uh, to achieve that, it's breaking down into six um, weeks on um, the different steps. So uh, you will start to start with a introduction to what is the plan you are going to develop. And then you are going to uh, define what data you are going to collect and uh, how you can collect it. And uh, then come to the um, consideration when you ana analyze the data. Uh, and uh, finally, how you can uh, use the data anal uh, analysis results to communicate and do the reporting to stakeholders. So you'll see um, for each week, um, people meet with the, the instructor and there's um, some breakout sessions during the live session for people to work on some small tasks or uh, to have discussion on their data practices. And we also provide the worksheets for you to complete um, the necessary um, activities. Um, so um, and this is the assignment for the first week. And um, for this course, there is more pre-session learning materials to go through. So we have a specific tab for people to prepare for the next week. Um, there's a pre-recorded presentation to watch and an activity, small activity to complete. All materials are provided here. And um, we also link to the discussion threads for people to um, share their work and uh, uh, get feedback. So uh, first week, define what the plan is, and uh, then second week, what to collect. Um, so you'll sometimes uh, the live session is um, very um, engaged and interactive, and the people have a lot of questions when that happens, and uh, when when we don't have enough time to answer all the questions during the live session, on uh, the instructor will pro provide a written format question or some other maybe recorded videos to enter the answer the remaining questions and we put it up on the learning management system as well. Um, so this is to complete the next step of the worksheet. And um, we also provided recorded instructions on how to complete that worksheet. Um, and um, the instructors also talk about the um, equity length, the equity considerations when people collect data. And uh, when you analyze data, it, there's also difference between quantitative and qualitative um, data um, collection and analysis. So finally, um, in the uh, last week, um, learners will come up with a plan of um, how you will um, analyze, uh, I mean, uh, communicate your results with your st stakeholders. Um, so that's it um, from my side. Um, sharing our um, past examples with you, and I want to stop for maybe one minute or so to see if we we have any questions from the chat from our audience. Okay. Cool. 
Um, so I'm going to hand over to Gray to continue. Gray, you're on mute. Okay. Go to the next slide. We'll get started. So th this is um, we shared with you the different formats. You know that we have you know different format courses, and what Shuya just showed you were the three hundred level courses. But I'm going to talk generally as to what differentiates us, and then I will go into you know the three hundred level you know hybrid courses. But as you see, you know we have gotten a lot of good uh, evaluations, you know, and this is based on what we talked before, that instructional design that we talked about, you know, how we analyze and design for the nonprofit. And, and I'm going to be talking more about how we evaluate. But as you can see, you know, even from our lighter level courses, uh, you know, they, they gave us good, good feedback, you know, since training is, you know, um, is simple, easy to use. Um, the content was uh, very informative, clear, you know, and concise. You know, so we we have a lot of you know good good comments and uh, you know awesome course. Um, but this is not accidental. You know, there is a whole process, and the process was what Chuya was describing in her you know, in, in, in in the courses, and I talked about you know briefly about the instructional design. So let's go to the next um, slide. So the key part of the key to what we do is the evaluation of the courses. And Priya showed you a, um, a um, you know, brief, um, um, uh, sorry about my phone I'm going crazy here. Oops. Um, and so Shriya showed you briefly the, um, you know, a, a form that people you know, use at the end of a course, right? So that tends to be what traditional courses do. If you go and you know, are taking a, a course, for example, um, you know, in, in any institution or in high school, you know, you, you've all experienced uh, courses where, you know, at the end of the course, there is a questionnaire and then uh, you, uh, you answer that questionnaire. And basically it assesses where you learn what was taught or, or, or if you recall what was taught, right? So, um, you know, so they know, you know, okay, you know, this person actually recalls what, what the instructor said or, or, or what the readings were or whatnot. But what it does not do is measure uh, how you're gonna be using that in the long-term and affecting the work. So at TechSoup, you know, and we have, you know, at TechSoup Learning, you know, for textbook courses, we have this aim, which is to ensure that nonprofits worldwide benefit long term from the learning uh, provided by textbook. So the, the key here is long term, and that ties into this other kinds of evaluation that we, you know, uh, have done, which is called a Kirkpatrick course evaluation, uh, and uh, that aims to see what do you do six months a year after you've taken the course. Because you can take a lot of instruction in other places, and you they might lead to recollection at the end of the course immediately after the course. But what happens months after it? You know, did, is was your investment of time and money worthwhile? So let's go to the next slide, and we will you know look at a little bit about the differences in a Kirkpatrick evaluation. Because what we are looking at now is the the levels. The reaction immediately, you know, after the course, how did you feel about the course? The learning, did you learn the skills, you know, that were imparted? The behavior, do you have a behavioral change? What we have not done yet at TechSoup is level four, which is, you know, document the results in how we've changed the organization by, cha by, by changing the staff or by changing you if you take a course. So let's go to the next slide. And talk a little bit about you know the process okay the process is right after the course we have a post course evaluation which was you what you saw you know that Shuya demonstrated and then we have months later you know if we are using the Kirkpatrick method we are, we're doing a uh, a follow up you know with a survey as well as an interview and so we we're, we're going to be looking at you know how are you doing 
And this, of course, is done with people that have completed at least 80% of the course out of fairness, because you know, if you have uh, only engaged with a course partially or, 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 or done 20% of the course, then of course the evaluation is not gonna reflect you know, things as they should. But we, we do that uh, for uh, the initial evaluations for all learners that complete the course and then you know, the, you know, the 80% that, that we follow through. So let's go to the next slide. These are just gonna be examples of a Kirkpatrick evaluation result. And you will see that in level one, we ask, you know, how did you feel about the training? Uh, did you like the structure of the course? Were activities engaging? So it's not just about the, you know, the evaluation about what you learned. That will, is also a second part. But this is the initial one. And as you see in this example, we get very high marks. And all of this ties into the initial instructional design. But, you know, uh, the, the averages are, are very good in telling that, you know, TechSoup is providing, at least for this course, you know, this example, very solid instruction. That's what this, this slide is telling us. Now, so let's go to the next uh, slide. This is a number of other slides. This is level two. So, so we, um, we, we look at, you know, also, no, 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 no. <laughs> you accelerated <laughs> too much. Go back one, thank you. So, so in these, in this case, we had a lot of you know different questions. You can see at the bottom, you know, questions one through six. Uh, only one question, you know, we, we got uh, lower scores, which means that uh, uh, we could mean that people didn't learn it. Actually, what we found was that our question was a little bit confusing. So, but we still got a very high score. So this talks about the level of learning of the actual skills that were imparted. Also, you know, we get very, very high scores. So let's go into the uh, next. Um, uh, this is showing, you know, how much people actually use in this case is Excel, you know, before the instruction and after the instruction, you can see the increase. Of course, the people that had less experience have um, now, you know, boosted, you know, higher levels than those that already came in with a lot of knowledge and, but it was even then they, they, they increased the, the level of usage. So, you know, let, let's go to the next slide. Gray, uh, before you proceed, uh, Swapnil Shah has raised his hand and has a question. So, uh -huh. Swapnil, do you want to ask your question? You can also type it in chat if you would like, Swapnil. Uh, Swapnil, I think you'll have to type your question in chat and we'll be happy to answer it or uh, you can type it in the Q&A section and we'll be happy to circle back with you and answer your question. Please continue, Gray. Thank you. Okay, okay. So, so uh, this is important because this is what really makes, differentiates TechSoup from others and, and I will talk more about that. But you can see in level three with the behaviors, you know, that it prompted curiosity, that it was enhancing, you know, you know, you know, their career development, you know, you know, the actual doing hands-on, you know, is is uh, is something that they seem to appreciate in uh, in these you know, courses. So I'm not gonna go through all of, of these, but you know, just to let you know that there is you know something solid going on in, in these courses uh, via the design and, and the delivery. So let's go into the next one. So what is different in our 300 level courses, which are the ones that Shuya demonstrated? And the thing that you need to think about is, um, you know, if you've taken a college course, you know, or a high school course, um, your instructor goes in the front of the class, delivers that, you know, you know, to you and walks out of the class at the end and hardly any feedback. Now imagine what would happen if, you know, that instructor, you know, you could give, you know, stop at the end of the class. Uh, that instructor was asked about, you know, what do they feel, you know, needs improvement, and and then they got some criticism from from, you know, others. You know, your level of 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 of, of, of that course would be vastly different, and that's what we do at the end of each session. And remember, these are courses that are you know, typically six weeks. At the end of each session, we have a debrief in which we ask, you know, exactly those questions from the instructor. You know, what do they feel needs to be improved? And then we have, 
you know, the instructional designer, in this case, you know, Shuya, we have a facilitator, we have a chat moderator, and we have technical support. So all of the aspects of everything that can influence those courses is taken into account to improve the course. And then we implement those changes and we implementing them in the next session. So what we learned from, from one you know, uh, session in the course will apply immediately next week in, in the second session, let's say. Um, but we also you know, are trying to improve the offering of that particular session in, in, in future you know, courses and in, 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 in all future courses, right? So, so that's, this is a, a continuous improvement approach that we use with these 300 level courses and every 300 level course goes through these evaluation. And this is what makes TechSoup different. The design was designed for nonprofits. You know, the, the, the delivery, you know, with the activities and, and the engagement, you know, areas that Shuya showed as to how to you know, communicate with others through forums, how, how to engage with, you know, online activities, and then our strong evaluation that guarantees the quality. So what we are saying is you could, sometimes people say, well, I could go to YouTube and find some of these things. Well, good luck, because yes, you can go to YouTube and find little pieces here or there, but you're not gonna have that global knowledge and you're not gonna have the quality of delivery. And who's gonna say six months, a year from, you know, from the time that you finish the course, if this was effective for you and your staff and your volunteers and your organization, we can tell you from what I just showed you before that indeed that's the case, that our courses are being effective and are having an impact on, on, the, uh, on people and organizations, even six months in a year after they have completed the course. And that's a real accomplishment. It's a real differentiator between textbook courses in other courses that you might find elsewhere. So I'm uh, gonna wrap it up there. Um, again, you know, finishing up with, with the long you know, term benefit of, of, of you know, it, it's our focus. That's what we, you know, aim at doing. Uh, and, uh, and we're gonna keep on plugging in, trying to, to keep on improving our courses delivery to affect your, the, the long-term effect in, in your nonprofits. And with that, I'm gonna pass it again to Saba so that she can tell you more about, you know, what do we offer? Great, thank you for that, Craig. Uh, let's run through quickly some of the topics that we have already covered and which are the courses that we're coming up with. So some of the past courses that we've covered are here up on the screen. Our data analytics for nonprofits course was a 300 level course. But we also do have two on-demand courses uh, in our catalog. So please do check them out. We've received great feedback about uh, these courses. Uh, Shuya shared a little about becoming a tech forward fundraiser and uh, two other courses that uh, we've also run are around uh, choosing the right tech and selecting the best fundraising uh, system. Again, our fundraising courses are uh, you know, courses that uh, a lot of nonprofits show interest in. And we do have some on-demand courses related uh, to fundraising as well. So please do check our catalog for that. And now coming on to um, which courses are coming up. So our first course that we have coming up is Cybersecurity and Data Privacy, which starts on March 14th. On the right of your screen, you're going to see all the things that we have are going to cover in the content of the course, all the things that you're going to uh, learn through the six week uh, program that we have planned. And it's around data privacy. How uh, do you look at cybersecurity for your organization on a, as a whole? Uh, what are the assets you need? How do you identify those? What are the fundamental elements of uh, cybersecurity? And then uh, through the six-week course, we help you uh, develop a roadmap. So you can plan for your organization in terms of uh, what cyber what the cybersecurity posture of your organization should be and what should be the data privacy practices, because all of us are handling data that is very sensitive. Uh, and so uh, we think that this course will help you with that journey. 
As you think about enrolling uh, for this course, we uh, urge you to please use the discount that we are offering. We, we do have $100 off that we're offering to uh, any of you that would like to come for the course. If you, if you think someone from your organization or a friend or a colleague might benefit from attending the course, please do pass on this discount coupon to them as well. Uh, you will use this discount coupon at checkout and we will be sure, uh, sure to, you know, share these links and these resources in our follow up as well uh, after after the webinar ends. Um, the next course after cybersecurity and data privacy is our nonprofit website strategy course. Again, this course is starting on April 5th and uh, to the right of your screen, you can see uh, all the learning objectives that we have outlined that you are going to be learning in the six week uh, period. And uh, we think the starting point of any nonprofit is uh, what you have on your website, all the important information around how you build a growth driven uh, website, what are the potential improvements that you can make on the current uh, one as well. And uh, we do have experts that are uh, going to be joining us over these six weeks to answer any questions that you may have regarding your current website or any plans that you might already be considering. Uh, and other tools that are available like Google Analytics, uh, that is an important tool when you are uh, building your website uh, to be used. So these are some of, uh, you know, our potential uh, content that we're going to be covering. And again, we are offering a hundred dollar discount. Please do use it. We want you to take advantage of the discount. Uh, so please do use it. Please do share this discount code as well with anyone that you think will benefit. And again, the course starts April 5th and it goes on for six weeks. And um, just like you, we uh, expect to have about 50 other uh, nonprofit staff and volunteers joining this uh, course. Um, so that's as far as our two upcoming courses. And in terms of levels of who are going to be participating, we do have uh, executive directors, nonprofit staff, mid-management, any, anyone that's in the IT uh, uh, team of your organization or anyone that is interested in, uh, you know, uh, getting to know more about this topic is welcome to join. Uh, we are sharing in our chat all the information with the links as well uh, for you to look through. And of course, we are available to answer any questions as well. And since we're discussing what are the topics that we have coming up and we've shared with you two other courses, we would love to hear from you. So here's our next poll. We want to hear from you and want to understand what are the topics that you are interested in um, learning. So please do again, go on to menti.com. Please use this code and type in your check. You can use the checkbox. There are multiple options. You can choose multiple options. Uh, so please do that or simply scan the QR code. Uh, and while you're doing that, we will pull up the results and share what we're seeing on our screen right now. Wonderful, AI, tech planning, project management, cybersecurity, uh, Adobe, website strategy. Wonderful, this is great. So in terms of website strategy and cybersecurity, you know you're covered in terms of the other topics. We definitely are planning courses on those uh, topics as well. And we will be sure to keep uh, keep everyone posted. Uh, earlier in the chat, I saw uh, we had shared uh, where our catalog is. And then, uh, you know, there's a tab called special offers, which usually outlines all the upcoming courses and discounts associated with those. I'm very happy to see that we're getting some more votes on social media and fundraising and Google Analytics as well. Great. Uh, thank you. Thank you for uh, putting in your votes here. All right, I think uh, we, let me stop here and just look at the chat and the Q&A. 
Yes, Kimberly, I see in chat that you sign up for the cybersecurity offer and receive $70. We can absolutely pass on the additional $30. Just drop in an email to us at learn at techsoup.org and we can take care of that for you. Absolutely. <laughs> um, I also do see some other questions in chat, which are mostly answered. Um, does TechSoup offer QuickBook courses? Uh, my colleague has put in a link for uh, through TechSoup courses. We don't have it, but at TechSoup.org, we do have a QuickBooks course and there's a link to that. Um, there's another question which says, uh, help a cohort of 16 nonprofit staff and learners on the slides being shown. And it's unclear to me what that means. Um, so uh, 60 uh, plus, we can help. So if you do have belong to an organization and everyone in your organization needs um, a course, we can help with that. Our 300 level courses that we have, we usually have enrollments up to 75 um, nonprofit uh, staff and volunteers. So that, that's what we were uh, referring to. I, I hope we answered that. Uh, I don't see, I think I see another question. Are any courses differentiated for orgs that are mostly using cloud hosted services versus those on premise? Um, a little bit of a tricky question, yes and no. So we do have uh, courses that are product based, um, like Adobe, et cetera. But we, uh, since these courses are uh, generic, they do not have, uh, they don't call out specifics in terms of whether it's specifically for cloud hosted or on premise. Not to say that we wouldn't offer something like that. I think this has given us something to really think about depth. So thank you for that question. I hope I was able to answer that. And Gray, if you want to add anything to that, you uh, you can, or Shuya, you can. Uh, it's, it's a question that we have in our Q&A section. Yeah, I you know we don't generically you know have different areas for for those you know but you know it it's depends on a course by course basis. Most of our um our courses you know that are software based you know are you know either Microsoft or or Adobe. Yeah, the, the other ones are not so software based, so they they wouldn't be differentiated. Um, Saba, I can just step in. Hi. Um, just to respond also to the cloud hosted services, I do want to point out that um, as, as Saba and Gray mentioned, we do have cloud based applications. We also have some courses on behavior on the cloud, for example, remote team management, online fundraising, choosing the right CRM database. So I think it's difficult to differentiate uh, cloud and on premise in terms of the actual application. Um, but there are there are a number of courses if you're looking at behaviors and how to use those applications for uh, general operations inside your nonprofit. Thank you for that, uh, Mona. I think I uh, uh, yes, I think uh, related to security and strategy. That's um, that is a big topic, and I'm glad that we do have courses coming up. Um, on that and definitely there is plan to do more. So thank you for that, Deb. Thank you for that acknowledgement. I think uh, we're, we do have time for more questions and as, as they pop up in chat or in the Q&A section, we'll continue to answer those. Um, we I also wanted to take time to acknowledge uh, all of you for being here with us and uh, sitting through our presentation, putting in your insights, putting in your questions. And as a thank you uh, we, for attending, we do have a special uh, discount for you as well. So we do have, uh, we've recently launched three excellent Adobe courses, which are our most recent courses. And um, we would like to offer a 10% discount uh, to each of you that has attended uh, this webinar today. Please use uh, discount code Adobe10Web to purchase any of our three new Adobe courses. We are very proud of these newest courses that we have, and we sure hope that you will uh, register for these courses and uh, utilize them and find them uh, engaging and helpful to you as well. So um, that's it, I think, that we have for today. Thank you very much, everyone, for 
joining us, being with us. And if you do have any questions, please email us at learn at techsoup.org. We'll be happy to hear from you and help you in any way that we can. Thank you for being here. Enjoy the rest of your week.